Blackmagic Design's new ATM Mini Pro Extreme and Extreme ISO have an awesome new feature in it called SuperSource. SuperSource is a separate video processor that feeds in as a video input and it can contain up to four other video feeds in it all in a separate box that can be moved around the screen and set up in size and everything. So it's like having four picture in pictures over a background or a foreground overlay and you can do some pretty awesome stuff with this. I'm going to be looking at how to set that up today as a gaming platform kind of thing where you can have two players in two games running just as a demonstration on how you could use super source it could also be used for a four person interview or something like that as well and you can create several different layouts so let's have a look at how you get super source running and then how you can manipulate it and later on in the video i'm going to be showing you some advanced techniques with it as well to be able to set up SuperSource, you need to be able to see it on your monitor. I'm going to do this just by turning it on on the ATEM surface. Here on this button, I'll just hit that, and then SuperSource, as you can see here, pops up on the screen. These are these four boxes all around me here. That's all the SuperSource feeds, and I'm going to show you how to configure those now. SuperSource has four different default layouts, and you can adjust all of those layouts in the four different boxes within it. So here's the ATEM control software, and as you can see, I've chosen the palettes thing up here, and I've just uh, closed up the color generators for now, and expanded the super source option in the right-hand gallery. Under here, we've got three different tabs. We've got presets, art, and copy. First of all, though, we're going to be looking at the preset. We've got four different layout options available. This is four boxes that are all roughly the same size. Then we've got four boxes that are two differing sizes. We've got a double box layout. And here we've got a special layout with two wide screens and a vertical split screen masked kind of look to the box as well. I'm going to do a gaming thing, so I want two main screens and then two screens with players. So I'm just going to choose this one here. And when we come back to the Super Source screen, you can see that this is how that's laid out. Just to show you the other ones quickly, we've got the four even boxes, which looks like this. We've got the two boxes, which is just uh, the first and second HDMIs. And we've got this split weird screen looking thing where we've got this vertical box and then we've got these two um, normal ratio ones. But for now, I'm just going to go back and choose this layout here. Now, in the layout, as you can see, there are four boxes. And if you have a look down in the box control here, this control drop down here lets you choose which of these boxes you're using. And we can choose to enable or disable any particular box and we can set up which HDMI source it's using. At the moment, this is box one, and it's using camera one. And if you're wondering which that one is, well, it's this one right here. This is box one. Now, it's hard to tell which of these boxes is which because they're not numbered straight across or down. This is camera one, and it's box one containing camera one. Box two is actually this one down here. If you come back to the ATEM control, what I'm going to do is uh, come to box two. And if you're having trouble figuring out which one's which, then what you can do is just enable and disable that one and it will disappear. So you can use that to help you figure out which box it is that you're manipulating at the time. It would have been great if they'd sort of numbered them one, two, three, four in here, but they haven't unfortunately. So we've just got to poke around and using that enable disable function is one that you can use to let you know which of these boxes it is you're working at the time so you're not just guessing. Okay, let's go back to the ATM software control and I'm just going to put something in each of those boxes so you can see how they lay out. Now, what I want to do is I want to have this box here that I'm in to be a little bit smaller and this one over here to be the game that I'm playing and a bit bigger. The one down here is going to be my opponent player and the one straight below me is going to be the opponent's game. Now, my opponent today is going to be Madame Pomfrey. 
Um, so I'm just going to put her down into that box there. Now to find out which box that is, I'm going to be going to the ATM software control and turning the boxes on and off. I'm pretty sure that one down there is box two. So what I'm going to do is go to box two and there you go, it's on and off. Now what I can do is I know that I can put camera three, which is what Madame Pomfrey's on, down into box two and there she is. So she's down there. She's also up here, so you can assign any camera to any of the boxes, or multiple boxes, which is cool. That's not really what we want. I want to put my game in there, and I'm playing Assassin's Creed. Right, so I'm going to put my Assassin's Creed game, which is on camera 7, over into this one here, just by turning it on and off in here. And we can see that that is in fact that. So now I will just set that to camera 7, and have a look back here, and there's my Assassin's Creed game. Now, at the moment, I'm in a big box and my game's in a little box. I'm going to swap that around later and position this, which is showing you some of the advanced features in here. But in the meantime, I'm going to quickly pull up another game screen down below. I'm going to just put Media Player 1 into that at the moment, which brings up a map screenshot that I took earlier. So that's part of game as well. So that's Madame Pomfrey's game screen. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of manipulation on the size of these things so you can see how that works. And I want to make box 1 a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is just change the size of that down to say 0.3. And I'm going to do the same for box 2. I'm going to make that 0.3. And um, skip back to super source so you can see the effect that that's had. So now these are all nice small boxes. Which means I want to make the two gameplay boxes quite a bit bigger. So I'll just do that one again. 0.47. There we go. Those two gameplay boxes are a bit bigger. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger again actually. Just uh, you can keep tweaking these around until they uh, suit what you want. That's probably good enough. And I'm going to change it on the x-axis and just take it a little bit more sideways and do the same with box 3. I will move that one across a bit more so that they're uh, not modeled up. Then box 1 I can just move up a little bit. You can just, as you can see, you can just keep fiddling these things around until you're happy with them. So you can see how you can create a gaming layout in here. So you can have two people playing the same game and um, on even split screens like this. And there you go. So that's how you can set this sort of thing up. You can also crop these down, which is how they get the vertical feed in this layout here. If you're going to click on one of the presets, it will apply all those sizes and um, positions back to it again and reset that. If you don't want to do that, don't, don't click on the box. And there's also the cropped all down here, which is how they get that sort of vertical screen we looked at before in that fourth preset. Now we're going to have a look at the art tab. In here you can choose which video source is being used to fill the background of the screen so that's behind the four boxes at the moment this has got media player 2 in here and i've just got this image here in media player 2 so when i go to super source you can see that that's what's in the background if i come back into here and choose media player 1 for example and then come back and look at super source again then as you can see I've now got the map in the background so whatever is in that video source is what comes up in the background. I could also choose camera one and here's me sitting in the background here between the, the frames. And uh, I could also choose say uh, color bars if I really wanted to, I don't know why you would ever do that. Or one of the color generators, I've got white in there and I think there's an orangey thing in there. So yeah, you can choose any of the video sources or anything you want, but uh, at the moment I'll stick with Media Player 2 because that's the Assassin's Creed thing which is in the background of my game. The one other thing you can do as Super Source is instead of having the art as a background, you can have it as a foreground. I'm not going to go too far into this, but just quickly show you what you could do with that one is in here you can say I've got the media player 2 and I want to set that as a foreground instead of a background I can just click on foreground here I'm going to just switch to the super source now if I change that from a background to a foreground this happens and if I move those clip and gain sliders around a wee bit you can start seeing that the foreground image now becomes semi-opaque it starts to key out and you can just move this around a bit and just have it as a bit of an overlay if you had a transparent image in here so a png that supported transparency for example then you could create like fancy borders or something like that that's what you can do with making the super source 
art into a foreground instead of a background i'm just going to leave it as a background for now so there's super source in a nutshell as you can see it's incredibly powerful and incredibly easy to use which is great and it's typical of how black magic are really thinking about giving these tools to us as creators it's great if you want to do multi-person interviews or multi-person gameplay or something like that that we've been looking at here you can also just switch between individuals and then super sources another video feed and have that set up to go so you could have one two three four camera feeds you can have the two person picture and picture running and then you can switch to super source as well all of these sorts of options are great to experiment with and um, as you can see it's really easy to use and if you want to know more about it then click here and subscribe and also keep an eye on this video and this video as well because they'll teach you more things about all of this great creative stuff that we're doing and i will see you soon in another video see you later